I'm Shelby Sim, and this is the Santinez Valley. Six beautiful communities with a million things to offer. Delicious food, world-class wine, and more fun than you can imagine. But at its heart is a community of great people with stories to share. Join me and let's discover the Santinez Valley. If you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of Santina's Valley wine. There are over 120 wineries here producing countless varieties, including some of the best in the world. Today we're visiting one of the wineries that started it all. We're out here at the legendary Sanford Winery in the beautiful Santa Rita Hills, also legendary. And we're here with the winemaker, Trey. Trey, thank you so much for having us out today. Hey, we're really happy to have you. Thanks for joining us. Right on. Uh, we are gonna learn more about the history of this amazing place, these incredible wines, once we move into the tasting room. But right now, we're in this beautiful barrel room. Please tell us a little bit about it and what we'll be doing out here. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have last vintage's Pinot Noir uh, sleeping in the barrel right now. They'll be sleeping for, for uh, 16 months in total, but as is required by our job, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to check on the wines. It's uh, something that we still have to do by taste, unfortunately, and uh, can't be done by machine, luckily, and so I thought we could thieve some wine and see where the wines are at this stage. Fantastic. How's that sound? That sounds great. I will never say no to a barrel tasting. All right, so let's try some Pinot Noir, Shelby, shall we? All right. So each of these is kind of on its own trajectory at the moment. And so what we have to do on a weekly basis, in addition to topping, uh, basically filling up the wine that evaporates through the uh, pores in the French oak wood, uh, we also have to taste it to make sure that uh, like a child, it's growing in blossoming in all the ways that we want to see it. So this Pinot Noir is our 2021 Sanford and Benedict. It comes from a very rocky site. Um, we have four different soil types, and this one I think will be fun for us to taste because it should highlight that classic Sanford and Benedict. I think, I think it's, it's uh, a vineyard that's usually very earthy, lots of mushrooms, but really spicy and savory and very pretty. I, I love this wine. Wow, you can already tell this is going to be a fantastic Pinot. And this is a classic Sanford and Benedict. It's got that bright acidity that really cuts through, but it's got really suave texture, and it's got that magical thing that I love in Pinot Noir that you're always searching for, that, that iron fist in a velvet glove, which is often talked about, but rarely accomplished. You can tell it's young, but man, it's got all the components. It, it is still, it's drinkable right now, my golly. Yeah, it's, it's only been in the barrel for about six months, and it'll be in the barrel for another 10. And um, right now it's, it's, uh, it's just entering adolescence. Mm. So it's, uh, it's really, like all of us, has to uh, do a little more learning and a little more growing um, before we're ready to put it in the bottle and then uh, age it additionally. So it's uh, showing really well for when, uh, when our guests taste it. Tell us a little bit about this particular barrel that the wine is in. So this barrel is one of several, but like all of our wines, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay really do well in French oak. 
I'm a good red-blooded American like yourself, but uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay uh, require French oak, and so this is a, a French oak barrel from, uh, from the center of France, and this wine will sleep in this barrel for 16 months. It'll spend its whole life here. So at this stage, it's going through malolactic fermentation. It's really growing. It's building the frame that it's going to live its whole life on in the bottle. And so right now, we're just checking in on it to make sure that it's uh, on a good trajectory. It's not playing with the wrong kids. It's not getting into the wrong crowd and um, staying straight and narrow and going to school every day. He's not kidding. These wines are like children to him. We have a rare thing in Sanford and Benedict in that we have a vineyard that has a track history of making great wines that age really well. Uh, the vines for this wine come from 50 year old vines this year. Uh, all unrooted in deep gravelly soils. And we have the wines that Michael Benedict made in the early 70s uh, to show us that um, classic age-worthy terroir-driven wines can happen in Santa Rita Hills. How long can wine stay in a barrel? You, you know, you mentioned the 70s. I can't imagine that they're still in barrel. They're in bottle, I would imagine. But can wine stay in barrel for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years? Not these, but you can keep the wines in the barrel for as long as you like. And it's really a preference of the winemaker and um, uh, what the site will allow for you. We want this wine to be a wine of the land. And so if the wine sleeps in the barrel for two winters, it gives it the full chance to evolve and grow, just like we do. And uh, um, to make sure that you're not, you know, keeping the child uh, in the house for too long, but that you're not pushing it out too soon without all the proper tools to grow. And so that's, that's how we look at the wines that, that uh, we make here at Sanford. And that's the idea with barrel aging. Wow. Tell us about the decision-making process, uh, all the way from the vineyard to pouring it into the glass. Wine growing and wine making, it's made up of a thousand decisions. And several of those decisions to get us from the vineyard to the barrel is a big differentiation on how the wine tastes in the bottle that you can share at the table. So, for example, we pick at night to preserve all the uh, fresh fruit aromas, uh, and we handle the wines very gently before they get to the barrel. And that doesn't stop at the barrel, but one of the techniques we use is uh, gravity. Uh, we don't use any pumps to move the wine, so all the wine is moved by gravity very gently and the thought is, and what we have seen, is that gives you uh, a lot more silky, a lot more elegant, and a lot more of the sight, the terroir can show through. It doesn't disappear with overhandling or over manipulation of the wine. One of the cool things that we have here that's really unique to Sanford uh, in our gravity flow operation is uh, we have tanks that are completely operated by elevators, something I'd never seen before at another winery I'd work it at, and um, something that's really unique to us. You should come check it out, it's pretty cool. Awesome, cool, let's go see. This is what I love about exploring wineries in the Santinas Valley. Each one has unique experiences. Check this out. Climb aboard. This is really unique. I don't know of another winery that has an elevator to gently move the wine by gravity. And so every bottle of Sanford Chardonnay or Pinot Noir moves by gravity. So before it comes into the barrel, it sits in this tank. We lift the tanks up where we're gonna go to the top of the winery. And, uh, and then we can drain it down into the barrels without a pump or without overhandling the wines. And uh, when the wine leaves the barrel, it goes into this tank and we can raise it up again and bottle straight out of it. So there's a tank below us. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're lifting that wine up. We get to go for a ride. You guys get to go for rides up this elevator. And then you're just gonna like you put a tube in there to run it downstream. That's it, that's it. This is tank lucky number tank 13, and uh, it's seen uh, some of the greatest vintages that Sanford and Benedict and La Rinconada Vineyard have produced. And uh, gravity does all the work for us, so we don't need to use uh, any pumps or any air or any over manipulation of the wine, and uh, it gives a more gentle, truer representation of the site, doesn't muddle it up with uh, over handling. Wow, how cool is this? That's fun. Very cool. Can we check inside the barrel? Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope there's nothing in there. Empty all the way to the bottom. Wow, that's great. As I think we've mentioned before on the series that uh, 
a lot of winemaking is cleaning. Yeah, we, we have to clean a lot. Uh, nature's great plan for grapes, or any fruit really, is to, uh, to have it ripen and fall on the ground and to ferment and then to turn to vinegar. And uh, a big part of our job is to, to stop it at the wine phase. And cleaning is a big part of that. The next time you're drinking a glass of wine, think about all the dedication and work that goes into making it. What an incredible view. This is the perfect place to take a selfie. Now that we're back on solid ground, I think we're going to go for a ride. Another authentic experience here at Sanford is uh, to really get folks into the vineyard. We have uh, ranger tours. You ready to go? Heck yeah. All right. This is awesome. Even though the vines are dormant right now, it's so cool to drive through the vineyard and see where this amazing wine comes from. Seriously, people, you gotta try this. Now that we've explored the facility and the vineyard, I think it's time to check out the tasting room. That was an amazing ATV ride. Now we're in the beautiful Sanford tasting room. Trey, what do we have in our glasses? Yeah, so we have uh, Sanford and Benedict Pinot Noir, 2017. And uh, we just got to see where the vines grow, the path that the wine takes from when we pick the grapes in the fall and age them in the cellar. And this is the ultimate goal. You know, it's taken several years to get here. So cheers. Wow. Cheers. Uh, there's a reason why Sanford is an iconic name in winemaking. You know, I make that annoying slurping sound out of habit, but, you know, Sanford and Benedict, for me, it's always a wine of the earth. It, it gives you all those classic, you know, forest floor, spicy baking spices and um, mushroom aromas. Uh, but it just, it's so enticing and so inviting when it hits the palate. I love it. And there's a reason for the slurping noise, though. Tell us about that. I mean... Yeah, it makes you look like a real, um, a real jerk at the party, but uh, at work it helps us get more air um, so that when we, uh, when we taste the wine, we can get a lot more of the flavor and the nuance that the site gives the wine. And so uh, it's a force of habit. I gotta stop doing that. Well, not if it's like it's got a purpose. I can remember first coming to the wine country and going to dinners and there would be people tasting and it, you, you hear the slurp and you go, what the heck, how rude people are. But there is a reason, it's to aerate the wine, right? To get all your taste buds and all the flavors. That's right, that's right. And wine is ultimately about pleasure. And um, if it's not bringing you pleasure, and if it's not showing all of its stuff, I mean, it's, why are we wasting our time? Uh, trust me, this wine is bringing me pleasure. All right, looks like we have a Chardonnay. Yeah, so Chardonnay, uh, Pinot Noir gets all the attention, but Chardonnay for me is, is really the sleeper. Uh, Sanford and Benedict, we've had Chardonnay as long as we've had Pinot Noir since we were established in 1971. And these old vines have really found purchase at S&B. Um, we're close to the ocean, and this is definitely uh, a wine that, that gives you that I just pulled up to the ocean character. You get a blast of sea breeze. You know, it's very saline on the palate. It's very savory. And it goes well with almost anything you can throw at it. So well balanced. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Sanford and Benedict, it always smells like chamomile and freshly blown out candles on the nose. And on the palate, it's, it's very straight, very precise, very direct, but um, very rich, very inviting. And like all of our wines, you know, it's very balanced. And so it keeps you coming back for another glass. It's not tiring. 
That's not work. I, I love these ones. This has been a really special visit. Uh, Trey, please tell us how we can learn more and find our way to Sanford Winery. Yeah, please check us out. We're uh, on Instagram and we have uh, sanfordwinery.com as well. We can ship almost anywhere in the U.S. or you can get in your car and drive two hours up the 101 from Los Angeles. Yeah, it's such an easy drive, folks. Come on up and maybe even stay in the Santinez Valley uh, while you're here. Stay for a few days. That was such an amazing tour, and now I think I'm ready to eat. Truer words were never spoken. Here we are in Los Alamos at Pico Restaurant. If you remember in the first season, we sat with Will Henry, owner and winemaker of Lumen Wines, but this time we're with Chef John Wayne. I think I'm gonna be doing something in the kitchen. Let's go check it out. We're here in the Pico Kitchen with Chef John Wayne. We're gonna talk about his name in a little bit, but first, let's see what we're doing here in the kitchen. Chef? All right, well, we're cooking up a, one of our signature dishes, uni tostada. Uni is uh, very synonymous to Central Coast. People are very aware of it. It's very abundant in these areas, and a lot of us eat it raw, but we've never considered eating it cooked. So uh, my preparation is an inspiration of Baja on a trip I did last year. And uh, we're gonna put it in a tostada form. The uni itself will be cooked into a pate. We think almost like a liver pate, mm. uh, shallot, wine, but spice wise, I'm gonna use some Mexican uh, spices. Wonderful, let's get at it. Okay, so we're gonna assemble and cook this really quick in our oven. So we're gonna take a nice heaping spoon. And there's one spoon for you. All right. Plop it down. I like to start in the center. And if okay. it helps to kind of grab it in your hand. Sure. A little bit. And we're just spread it around. Or schmear. Schmear, right. I believe it takes several years of culinary school to learn to professionally schmear. And try to get an even schmear across the whole tostada. And I like to leave a little bit of negative space on the edge. And then that's it. All right, good job. Thank you. You could be my sous, you need another job. Yeah, you know, beautiful. Now it's gonna go right in the oven. All right. Two minutes. Two minutes, well we got two minutes. Tell us about that, that name, is it after Pilgrim? So, hey, Pilgrim? Yes, it yeah. is, after the John Wayne, uh, obviously big name to fill. Yeah. And I think it's done me well in my life and in my careers. Uh, that I've, I've been involved with. My father was a very, uh, uh, was a fan, he was a fan guy. Uh, loved John Wayne, had memorabilia all over the house. We, I grew up watching just about every single movie you could ever imagine. My dad and myself did a little bit of live re reenactment, like Western stuff. We belong to a couple societies that do those types of things. Oh, fun. So I grew up hunting, shooting, all that neat stuff. Yeah. So, and just, you know, it's, it's sticks. And anywhere I've ever worked, there's sometimes other Johns. I just go by JW or John Wayne. Well, great. What a great fit to be in the western town of Los Alamos <laughs> know, right? and have a John Wayne. Yep, yeah. Yep. Hey, Pilgrim, who doesn't love the Duke? All right. Well, we got the timer here. Let's take a look at what we got. Turn that off. All right. We've got a nice hot thing of uni tostada going. Now we're going to dress it up. So I have a little bit of mashed, fresh mashed avocado with just a little bit of lime. I'm going to give it a little dab of that. Now we have these Oaxacan braised peanuts with garlic and shallots, a little bit of smoked salt, a little oil and chili flake. Okay. Yum. There's a nice texture to it. Yes. And we just spread a little bit of this around. Wonderful. Now a little sweetness, nothing wrong with getting a little sweetness into your sauce and balancing. So it's unagi or eel sauce, okay? okay. Kind of like a sweet brown sauce. You use it a lot of it in uh, Japanese cooking. Think about all the many cultures that are blending together here. Mexican, Japanese, California avocados. This is going to be delicious. Smoked sea salt. And then our greens. Obviously we work with a lot of local farmers around here. These are microgreens we use exclusively from Goodwitch Farms. Spread those around, a couple little flowers, adds a little color. Pico, as with many of our restaurants in the Santinas Valley, sources within 10 miles of everything is what you're gonna taste. And we're gonna transfer it onto our wood board plate. Presented with a little bit of a grilled lime, half a grilled lime here, and it's really to cut that fat 
uh, that's located with the avocado and the uni itself, uh, the lime is going to cut right through that and just really balance and even out the dish. I'm going to I'm going to dig in, chef. Dig this in. looks Do amazing. It. Are you gonna join me on this? Sure. All right. Let me, you gonna uh, line me there? Yeah, I'm gonna line me there. Put it all over. Put some sauce there. All right. All right. Cool. So a lot of people think, you know, Santina's Valley, we're in this western country, and we are. We're on the central coast, but the ocean is less than 10 miles away. Mm -hmm. So even fish is locally sourced here in the Santina's Valley. Looks amazing, chef. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Taste the seed, oh, oh. and all the different umami type flavors. This is so good. You have to come and try it for yourself. I understand there's a couple more things for us to taste, mm -hmm. as well as drink. We've got Lumen Wine here in-house, as well as an incredible craft cocktail program. Oh yeah. I can't wait to taste what Chef has prepared for us on the back patio. Chef, that was super fun in the kitchen there. Thank you for that. Oh yeah, well thanks for your, your help. Right on. <laughs> you did a great job. We're out in their beautiful patio here at Pico, and it looks like we have some amazing dishes, and we're gonna eat as we go, but let's start with that amazing, is it an avocado crudo? So it's the stuffed avocado crudo, how I like to call it. Uh, basically it's a, uh, a typical spicy tuna type mix, uh, made with some local uh, line caught tuna that's mixed fresh hand cut um, inside of a avocado, half of avocado that you have to slice. I train my guys to cut a, tw a minimum of 21 slices. Mm. I get around 35 yeah. or more, but with experience, you can get these beautiful little little shavings. And then it's just topped uh, black tobiko, yeah. which is flying fish roe. Okay. And then I make my own ponzu, which is a citrus soy sauce that mm. just kind of complements the whole thing. So not caviar. Not it's actual fish caviar. Roe. It's yeah. fish roe, another okay. type of fish roe. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Let's try it out. Okay, yeah. I'll let you do the honors. All right, thank you. And then what uh, what do we have in our glasses? So in our glasses, we're drinking uh, Lumen. Bo both glasses are Lumen. We have the 2017 Pinot Noir from Santa Barbara. And then we have Lumen Essence, uh, which is a special wine that they do, and it has a little hints of ginger. All right. Before we taste, let's do a toast of this. It's an orange wine. It's an orange wine, yes. Yeah. Lumen Essence is a newer one that they've been doing. It's quite good. Lumen Wines, uh, Lane Tanner and Will Lane Henry. Tanner and Will Henry. Yeah, delicious. Definitely hints of ginger in there. Yes. All right. It should go great with the crudo. Mm. Smooth, crunchy, lively, and just like any raw fish you eat, you get that instant protein punch that makes you feel like you're eating healthy besides. Mm -hmm. well, you got all that avocado. Definitely yeah. eating healthy. Absolutely. Delicious, chef. Now, awesome. What do we have here? So here, one thing I don't want, we don't want to forget is uh, we offer our Amuse to all our guests as a palate cleanser. Kind of gets your, your mouth going, clean it out from anything you might have had before. Uh, but also you could enjoy it between each courses as well to kind of cleanse your palate. Okay. Uh, so right now I'm offering uh, a pickled watermelon rind. So we're featuring watermelon in a, a few different ways on the menu. The bar is using it right now as well. And I don't like to let things go to waste. So the rind itself, and if you look into, you know, like, Southern American cooking, they love to pickle things. And pickled watermelon is something you'll find quite common. Hmm. And I, I love it. It has a great texture, great snap to it. Hmm. And you mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily think you're, you're eating pickled watermelon, right? No, but at all. And it's just a way I like to cross utilize. And you find those things all throughout my menu. Yeah, more of a, again, another umami type of flavor that levels everything out mm -hmm. to start with the next. Wonderful. What do we have here? All right. So I love, I'm part Italian. Uh, I like to bring a lot of my heritage and roots to the menu. I did train in Italy once upon a time ago as well. And my grandfather was a chef, had his own restaurants, and I learned from him growing up. So pasta is very close to, to my heart. We're not dominantly an Italian restaurant. You know, I like uh, um, worldly influences come into my menu and my cuisine uh, due to experience or just like I said, how I grew up. Right. So this is a freshly made extruded beet pasta made with semolina beet juice. We have a, a roast beet puree 
and then cross utilize all of our wine. If we ever have wine that might turn or just not good for consumption, it goes into my cooking. So I roast these beets whole in wine, huh. with a little, little bit of honey, with some thyme until they're soft and I create this puree with a little lemon juice and olive oil. Beautifully smooth puree, saute with the pasta. It's also been tossed in a fresh uh, basil pesto. I finish it with a whipped goat cheese, a little bit of basil crystal, pistachio, and just some more of those greens. Mm. Well, it looks so a great, colorful, great, colorful, so fun. Yeah. fun dish. I like to have fun with my pasta instead of being so traditional. Sure. But the approach will always be traditional and classic. So yeah. you'll definitely find a good snap with my pasta. Perfectly al dente. That's the word, mm. al dente. Mm -hmm. And the beet flavor is there, but not overpowering. You get that little spice, little texture, the nuttiness, creaminess of the the um, cheese. It's all there. Oh. Yeah, so I noticed we have also some red on the table. So we have the Lumen Pinot Noir uh, 2017. Mm. Should go well with the beets. Cheers, Chef. Thank you again Cheers. for having us out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming out. This has been amazing, but there's always room for cocktails and dessert. Chef, thank you awesome. so much thank again you for, for having out. us out here Always at Pico. A pleasure having you. We did not talk about these gorgeous cocktails in front of us. Uh, just tell us what they are and folks can come and taste them for themselves. Awesome. Well, we have a great cocktail program. Liz, yes. Liz has definitely worked on a, a new spread. We don't have normal uh, spirits here. So when I say that, we don't have Bacardi on our shelves, Absolute, things like that. We right. try to focus on small batch uh, who are making fine spirits. So we have uh, our, our custom cocktails here. We have the Unicorn Margarita. It's cool color, colored with um, butterfly pea flower. And then here we have the Jungle Bird, very popular cocktail that we have, uh, just people love it. Wonderful. And then what is this? So we do a lot of desserts here, and one that I love, just very simple, simple things, and you know, coming from Italian roots, uh, we make our own gelatos and sorbets. So this is a vanilla custard style gelato uh, with a little whipped cream, three uh, little uh, coffee beans and a little bit of fresh Salvatore local coffee. So it's a pour over. So I'm going to take and just pour this over. And then you can enjoy that. I can't think of a better way to finish a meal than with a little and a little liquid dessert for me. Yes. Good food, good wine, beautiful setting. Pico has it all. Mm. One more bite. <laughs> mm. So good. Chef, please let us know how folks can learn more and come and visit Pico. Well, Los definitely Alamos. take a look at us on our website, picolosalamos.com. Uh, also, you know, we're all over Instagram, Facebook, always posting great things that we're doing here, whether it might be wine, a new cocktail, or a brand new dish to the seasonal menu. Um, things rotate quite often, and we try to be as local as we can and just find great products, whether it be local or somewhere from around the world. Fantastic. A great reason to come and discover the Santinas Valley. This day has been a treat for my taste buds. From the best wine to the tastiest meals, this is just a hint of what the Santinas Valley has to offer. So come check it out and be sure to bring your appetite. Next time on Discover the Santinez Valley.
Not only is the San Ginés Valley a great place to visit right now, but it's full of rich history. Let's go in and check out the San Ginés Valley Historical Carriage House Museum. To see past episodes, please check out our YouTube channel and Amazon Prime.